Welcome back to Don't Forget to Bless the Food. I was away last week, didn't feel too good, but thank you everybody for your, for your prayers. I'm all better. We have a great show this week. The Jersey asparagus is in. We're going to make some roasted asparagus. Then we're going to make some angel hair pasta with shrimp and asparagus sauce. And then we're going to do a classic, classic shrimp scampi. So first we're going to go ahead and do the asparagus. And what I have here is Jersey asparagus that I have soaked and cleaned and cut off the ends. And this is called a cigar asparagus. It's the thicker, more flavorful. So what I'm going to do is drizzle this with some olive oil. Generously, obviously. And then I'm going to add about four tablespoons of fresh garlic. Salt and pepper. salt. Okay, and here's a little trick. We're just going to roll it back and forth, and this is going to cover everything. Now we're going to pop this into an oven on 350 degrees for 25 minutes, and when we serve it, we're going to top it with some fresh goat cheese. So we're going to go ahead and pop this in the oven. Now I'm going to start with our shrimp and asparagus angel hair pasta. I have a pound of shrimp and it's de-veined, cleaned, and part cooked. I cooked it for about 30 seconds and the reason I cooked it for 30 seconds is it's just much easier to chop up because I like to chop it up because so I don't like to get that giant piece you know, in my mouth. So I'm just going to give this a real basic chop just to break them up a little bit. Just make sure we get them all, like th maybe in threes, smaller ones in half. And these are medium sized shrimp, fresh shrimp too. You can do frozen, but I like fresh. Okay, so that's a, a rough chop. We're going to put these back in our bowl. Okay. Okay. Take that out. That was a show. I'm going to wash my hands. And I'm going to flip my board. I'm going to flip my board because of the raw fish. So I'm going to grab some green onion. Pretty green onion. We talked about these before mild flavor, more of an herb, more of an onion down here. I'm going to chop off the bulbs, set them aside. About two inches up from the bulb, we're going to use that part. It's not as mild as the top, not as oniony as the bottom. So we're going to set that aside and give this a nice chop. We're going to use green onion in two of our dishes today. Make them match a little bit. Okay, so we're going to just slide this over a little bit. I'm going to bring in some sliced portobello mushrooms. The recipe calls for a cup, but when you cook them down, they really disappear. So I went with two cups, and we're just going to give them a quick slice. Make sure you don't use your shrimp knife. We're just going to run our knife through these and chop them up a little bit. Just so they're not gigantic. And portobello is used in a lot of oriental dishes. And the dish that I'm making right now usually has like a fettuccine sauce or an alfredo. But if you know me, and you do, I like to switch everything up. So I made this kind of an oriental dish instead of your typical alfredo shrimp with cream sauce because I think everybody's probably a little tired of my cream sauce. Okay, so there's our, our mushrooms and our green onion and our shrimp. I'm going to bring into the view the rest of the ingredients that we're going to use. So if you make it at home, you know. We have a quarter cup of olive oil. Now we went to extra virgin olive oil for this, which has a more fr fruitier flavor. It's if you're going to use virgin olive oil, you want the higher, darker green color. It's going to give you a fruitier flavor. And then here we have five tablespoons of just plain white vinegar. And then this is 
three tablespoons of soy sauce, and I got the kind that has no salt. And then we have a quarter cup of brown sugar. It looks like more than a quarter cup just because I didn't pack it down. And then we have five tablespoons of fresh garlic. So that's our ingredients. We're going to take a little break, and we're going to carry everything over to the stove, and then we're going to put it together. Okay, so I have my wok nice and hot, and um, if you don't know what a wok pan is, just a rounded bottom, you, traditionally used in, in oriental cooking. So my wok is nice and hot, and to the wok we're going to add our olive oil, extra virgin. And to that we're going to add our garlic. And to that, we're going to add our green onion. We're, we're adding our ingredients in the order in which they cook the longest. Garlic cooks longer than my onion. Now I'm going to add my mushrooms in. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're just going to slide this in. I'm going to give it a little stir, get them going. And we're going to serve this over angel hair pasta. So I've pre-cooked that ahead of time. We all know how to cook pasta, so, you know, for time's sake, I went ahead and cooked that. Okay, so now that this is starting to wilt, I'm going to add about four cups of fat-free chicken broth chicken stock and this is going to make a really nice sauce over top of our pasta I'm going to give this a little stir okay now to that we're going to add our quarter cup of brown sugar Just drop that on in our white vinegar five tablespoons our soy sauce. If you've noticed, we haven't added salt and pepper to this. It's because the soy sauce is very, very salty and peppery. I got the low salt, but if you want to use the regular, if you like a higher salt content, go ahead and use the higher salt. Okay, now while this simmers, I'm going to go ahead and start prepping for our scampi. And if you notice back here, I have some boiling water. That's going to be where we cook our asparagus for this, which I need to grab. For this dish, we're only going to use the tips of the asparagus. So I'm going to go ahead and chop off 
the tips for this and drop them in that water. Make sure you always grab a clean knife. I'm going to go down about another half inch just so we don't waste as much and we'll roast these with the other asparagus later. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this into this boiling water. And then I'm going to turn it down to low just so it simmers because we don't want it to boil. We want it to be not real mushy. And it's going to be that bright, bright green color. I'm going to cover that up. This looks good. Let me give it a stir. Okay, and I'm going to just turn this down to a simmer also. Because we don't want everything to wilt away. We want nice, big chunks in there. And that looks good. So over here on this burner, I'm going to get my pan hot. And I'm going to drop in... Four, four tablespoons of butter, which equals one half of a stick of butter. And while that's melting down, I'm going to grab, switch this out of the way, and grab a new cutting board. And I have some more of those pretty green onion. I'll take off the bulbs. I'm going to go up about an inch and a half from the bottom, remove the tops. I'm going to give this a little chop. I'm going to toss these in with the butter. Give it a little spin. Break up this butter so it melts down a little bit better. To that we're going to add four tablespoons of garlic. And this is just a traditional scampi. We're also going to, now scampi is supposed to be eaten by itself traditionally, but we're going to go ahead and throw it over top of some angel hair pasta also. Try to keep things kind of the same because I want you to be able to see you can take similar ingredients but make two separate meals, two completely different meals but with similar ingredients. So while that's simmering down, I'm going to go over here, flip my cutting board, and then chop up this here shrimp, which is another pound, same deal, part cooked, shelled, and deveined. And we're just going to chop it into threes, like we did with the other shrimp. Just a real rough chop. And our shrimp we want to add to the last... We don't, you know, I didn't add it to the other one because it cooks really quickly and we don't want it to overcook. Overcooked shrimp doesn't taste very good. Okay, so now that that's chopped up, I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to grab some fresh parsley. Bring it over here. I'm going to cut the ends off my parsley. And just give this, actually... I'm going to just break it in half instead of chopping it. I'm going to throw it right in here with the onion. Have a bit of butter there. We don't want to waste. And we're going to turn that down to low. Okay, and so our scampi, we have, this is a white cooking wine. This is non-alcoholic, so it's okay for everybody. If you wanted to use a regular um, Chardonnay or white wine, Zinfandel, you can use that, but I, I prefer cooking wine. So I'm just going to add about a cup and a half to our scampi. And we're going to let that simmer a bit. Move this out of my way. And I'm going to come back over here. 
check on this. And this is looking good. And I'm going to check on my asparagus. And I want to check for doneness because I don't want this to overcook. And it's going quite well. And actually, I think I'm going to turn that up just a tad bit. And this one to get a boil back going. And now that these vegetables have cooked down quite a bit and are soft, I'm going to add some toasted sesame seed. And these you can get right in your spice aisle. It has the little shaker thing, but I'm going to use so many that the shaker is just going to hinder me. And I'm going to add probably about four tablespoons. And this is going to add a really nice crunch, a really nice toastiness to our pasta. And I can see that it has already reduced. So I'm going to come in with some more chicken broth because we have a lot of pasta to cover with this. Okay. I want to bring that back up to a boil. Okay, so while this is simmering, I'm going to peek into our oven and shake around our So our asparagus cooks evenly. And this looks amazing and smells amazing. Somebody's got to get working on that smell of vision because uh, if you're not here in the studio, you're missing all the nice scents. this around a little bit make sure every piece is roasted and give it a little shake and me shaking it like that is just so that I'm coating it with the olive oil they roll really nice so they're just getting coated with all that nice olive oil okay so we're gonna close this back up let that go to it and we're going to come back to these two dishes which are looking quite well and if you noticed in here my cooking wine has really reduced so I'm going to go ahead back in with add a little bit more when it reduces it takes a lot of the flavor away too so a lot of it's just evaporating into the air we want to make sure we add more to reconstitute it and actually I'm just going to go ahead and finish it And this is coming back to a boil and looks great. Okay, now I'm ready for my shrimp in my, my oriental meal. So I'm going to go ahead and add my shrimp in. Be careful plopping it in because it's going to give you a little splash. quick stir. When you're cooking shrimp, in here it's, it's hard to gauge because it's floating, but you only want to cook shrimp a minute on one side, flip it, and cook it two minutes on the other side so it doesn't overcook. And if they're extra large shrimp, you just want to do that a minute and a half, two and a half minutes on the other side. Shrimp cooks quite quickly. And you know it's done when it turns that beautiful shade of orange. And of course you're not going to be able to see that much with the soy sauce we have here, but you can see the nice pretty orange. Okay, so we're going to let that simmer, and we're going to bring our shrimp over here to our scampi. And again, be very careful adding in your shrimp because it will splash. And right, almost immediately, the shrimp turned a brighter orange than what it was already. Okay, now I'm going to lightly pepper the scampi. 
your shrimp is already a bit salty so I'm not going to add any extra salt and if you're having guests let them salt their own food you can always add more but you can't take it away and I like a lot of pepper obviously I'm a little heavy handed on the pepper and you can also add some hot pepper seeds if you like the heat like I like the heat okay so let's give this a little stir with the pepper and this looks great and this looks amazing and smells amazing. Okay, so we brought that to a boil. We're going to bring it down, bring all the heat down. And I'm going to go back here and check our asparagus. You can, I don't know if you can, I'm going to take it off the boil so you can look at the color it turns. Such a beautiful green color. Grab the piece and I'm going to check it for doneness. Perfect. Sliced right through. Just perfect. Pop that back in there. And it's on low. Okay, so this is down the low. Okay, so I've already cooked my pasta, so I'm just going to grab the pasta and add some into our mixture and dilute it a little bit. I made a lot of pasta. And again, be careful. And this is angel hair. I like angel hair pasta for, for dishes like this because the pasta is not going to take away from the dish. If you're using a fettuccine or um, just a regular spaghetti, the noodle is going to be too big and it's going to really take away from the flavors that are already in here. So I'm just going to grab a handful and add it in. Make it look pretty. And then we're going to pour this back over the pasta when we, when we go to serve. And, you know, if you look in your pasta, you'll see some dry parts. We'll just take those out. We'll put this in there. If that doesn't look like an oriental dish, I don't know what does. Okay, we'll grab this one. Give that a little stir. This looks amazing. And who knew we'd be back globe trotting again? We went back to China again. Tried to get away from doing that, but um, I just can't help it. Okay, this looks perfectly great. Smells amazing. All oh, those portobellas release their color, and you get that nice brown color in there. Wash my hands, so grab the other spoon and give this a little stir. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and let this simmer. I'm going to take a little break and I'm going to finish up the asparagus and get everything pulled together. So we'll be back in a minute. and I am the executive producer for CTF TV Live. We are a 24-hour day, seven-day week internet TV radio, but we have special programming going on during the week nights, and uh, specifically we want to share some with you. On Monday nights from 8 to 8.30, we have a program called Don't Forget to Bless the Food with Amy Mummick, who's an awesome, awesome chef. Uh, you will be delighted by her different meals that she brings. After that, we have Miracle Monday from 8.30 to 10.30 where we pray for the children, we pray for teens, we pray for adults. 
and we have beautiful music, and we also have a time where you can share, you can chat in, and you can check us out. On Wednesdays, we have from 6 to 7, it's called The Word with Lola Proud. And uh, she has such an anointed message. She's been teaching right now in Genesis about the blood covenant. Right after that, we have from uh, 8 to 9 o'clock is the Holy Hip Hop Hour with King Richard. He comes in with some hip hop from people all around the Delaware Valley area. On Fridays, we have the Power Hour with Dan and Linda Brank from 7.30 to 8.30. Anointed music, anointed teaching. You can check it out. On Fridays, right after that, is the Rick Lee Originals from 8.30 to 9.30. Rochelle Zyler, a, a fashion designer who designs jewelry and many accessories. So, go to this right in front of you right now at CTF TV at 856-628-4453. Let us know, or you can go to our website at www.ctf-tv.com. God bless you. We're looking forward. Okay, so we're all cleaned up. We got our pretty bowls out. Remember a couple weeks ago I told you if you're going to make pretty food, serve it pretty. Make it look appetizing. So I bought these really pretty springtime -y bowls to make everything look nice. Okay, so here we have our pasta. And I'm just going to olive oil it a little bit. Just give it a little whirl. And I'm going to separate it into two bowls. When I was a kid, I didn't like, I didn't like spaghetti sauce. Now I love spaghetti sauce. And this is how I ate my pasta when my mom would make it: olive oil and parsley. But now you can't keep a tomato away from me. I love it. Okay, we're gonna put some over here. I need bigger tongs. It takes forever to fill the bowls with the tiny little tongs. Kitchen, kitchen equipment is very important. When you're cooking, you got to make sure you have the right tools. I'm not a gadgety person, but i got to have the right tools, which today I really do. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and... Spaghetti. Angel hair. Okay, so I'm going to move the extra out of the way. It's in the bowl. At first, I'm going to grab our mushrooms okay this one has more so I'm just gonna add it right in here how pretty is that I'm telling you somebody has got to get that smell of vision going because that smells amazing okay and then here's our asparagus that we talked about I want to get the water in, so I have my slotted spoon, and we're just going to top this. Pretty. Set that aside. You know what else? Let's grab. Let's garnish it with some more of those sesame seeds for a little more crunch. I like things that are crunchy. When you have food, you should have a little, something soft, something salty, and then a little bit of a crunch. Okay, and there's pasta number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just one more scoop of the, because this bowl looks a little lonely. I'm gonna add that in there. And I'm gonna grab our scampi. easily pour this over. Make sure you get all that goodness off the bottom. And that cooking wine really smells wonderful down in the scampi. Give it a little stir. I'm going to take a little of that fresh parsley and give it a little chop just as a garnish. Take away the stems. If you are a gardener at all, or even if you're not a gardener, fresh herbs in your garden. If you're a cook, if you love to cook, 
plant some parsley, plant some rosemary, plant some sage. Fresh herbs, there's nothing better. Sure, you can buy the little easy shakery stuff out of the store, but it's $7.99 a shakery bottle when for $0.39 cents you can get a whole pack of seeds and grow it yourself. Now, every year you'll have to buy another pack of seeds for the parsley, but rosemary and sage come back every year, so it's well worth it to do a little gardening, get a little green thumb. We're going to tuck that with a little parsley and just for some prettiness, we'll throw some of that on top. And there's our two pastas. So now I'm going to go over to the oven and pull out our, our asparagus. Let's move this out of the way. And this looks amazing. I'm just going to grab a cutting board here to sit it on because it's quite hot. use my little tongs here to plate them up really pretty. I bought this orange because it's going to contrast so nicely with the green asparagus. Make it pretty. Move this aside and we're going to finish that asparagus off with some goat cheese. Okay, wash my hands a little bit. Goat cheese and asparagus work well together, but if you like feta, you can put that on here too. And I'm generous. I'm only going to do half because, well, Ken tasted it. He said it's good. So that means everybody will like it. I was going to only do half, but everybody will like it. If you don't like it, squeeze it off. <laughs> it's a really watery cheese, goat cheese, so it'll melt down really nicely. That looks yummy. I'll wash my hands, grab a plate, and make it look nice on a plate for us. Grab another. And again, on a nice, pretty plate. And if you'll notice scripture on our china, we're going to plate up each one. Let's start with our oriental pasta. It's really not oriental, really. I just like to switch everything up and make it different. Nice shrimp on there. Make sure you get a portabella on there. So you get a little zip of everything. And if you want to serve this with a little side of extra soy sauce, I know people like a little extra for dipping. I wouldn't really serve these together, so I'm going to just separate them a little bit. And this is our scampi. See what I mean about the bright orange? As soon as that shrimp is cooked, it's that really bright orange color. Let's grab a couple of these really pretty asparagus spears put in the center. And maybe one more. Maybe skinny ones without it. Just to get that pretty color on top. I'm going to grab some of these sesame seeds just to pretty the plate really nice. Just on this one. Not on that one because that is scampy. But of course you could top this with some roasted garlic if you wanted to take some garlic cloves and roast them in some olive oil. That would work really nicely on the side of this dish. And some of those buttermilk biscuits would go really good too. So that's our meal. We have our shrimp scampi, traditionally shrimp, shrimp scampi. And then we have our asparagus with shrimp, angel hair, and portobellas. Our New Jersey asparagus roasted with fresh goat cheese. So, that's our show this week. I hope you will make our recipes. I hope you will set a place for Jesus. And don't forget to bless the food. 
think we have a little bit of time, so I just wanted to share a little testimony about how how the Lord has blessed me um, recently. You know, last week we had to run a um, preempted or I'll say classic episode of Don't Forget to Bless the Food. It's a really early one, so you could see all the little mistakes I made, and I, I've noticed how I've grown. But I couldn't take last week because I had a severe case of bronchitis. I could barely talk. My throat was extremely sore. My ears were bad. For three days, I had a fever of 104 degrees. When the new episode of Don't Forget to Bless the Food came on at 8 o'clock on Monday night, my fever was 104 degrees. At the end of the show, I took my temperature again. My fever was 101 degrees. When Miracle Monday came on, Pastor Eric prayed for me, very power, powerful, very moving, had me crying in my seat. My fever was 99 degrees afterwards. The next morning, I was perfectly normal. And that's the power of prayer. If, if you're not with, with, with God, if you, if you, when all else fails, go to the instructions, get in the Bible. If you're having a bad day, open it up, read the word, you'll feel better. Trust me, I know I've been there. Pray about it, it all gets better. Ask and you shall receive. So, with that being said, that's our show. Don't forget to bless the food. Tune in next week. Sign in and chat with us. And we'll see you again. Have a good night.